Hello and welcome to the uh, Encouraging Word of today. Today is Wednesday. It is July the 31st. And we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, picking up now in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is just trying to explain what all the mm, previous chapters have led us up to in realizing that the gospel of Jesus Christ is our only hope. And if we don't work for the gospel, we work from the gospel because it's out of the gospel that we do it with a, a spirit of love and humility and selflessness where when we do it in a religious form, it becomes selfish and self-centered uh, and, um, and sinful. And so you're going to see uh, here, he's going to explain that religious activity does not make you right with the Lord. It doesn't it doesn't help you to uh, have a right relationship with him. And so uh, in chapter 10, uh, because it's not religious activity that you're, per it's a lifestyle that should predominantly come out of the time that you spend in fellowship and worship with the Lord. And so he says, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant he doesn't want us to be ignorant concerning what it means to have a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to understand the reality and the truth uh, that he loves us and that he wants us to have a working relationship that is constant and steady throughout every area of our lives. And so he says, How that all of our fathers passed under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual meat, and all did drink the same spiritual drink. And so he says, they all, the whole entire clan that came up out of Egypt, when God brought them out of slavery and out of bondage, when he delivered them, <laughs> same thing in salvation. We come to him and saying, we want deliverance. But then we don't go out and live in that deliverance. We, we live for self-gratification. We live for ourselves rather than living for the Lord. But we want the Lord to save us and cleanse us so we don't have to uh, pay the consequences of our sin. And uh, have to have, we, we just want everything to be rosy and pink and, and, and our lives to go just exactly the way we want them to go. And if we don't get that, then, well... We'll see the examples tomorrow, but he's just trying to get to the point today that religious activity does not uh, put you in the right relationship with God. And notice what he says. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And so many people come and say, I want to follow Christ, or I, I believe in Christ. But yet their lives do not line up with the reality of Christ. Their lives do not start to line up with their life looking like Christ. Rather than they add Christ into their life and then they say, now that I'm in you, now give me all the blessings and make all my wishes and dreams come true. And he's not a genie in the bottle. That's not how it works. He loves us and he wants a relationship with us and realizing that, yeah, as Matthew six thirty three says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. What were all those things? All those things which the Gentiles sought after. It's not a problem of having... Um, the things, but if you have God, then you realize that you really have all that you need, but he does shower his children with blessings, but it's in the context of making sure that those blessings don't become the center of our lives, but Christ stays, it remains that center. We use those things to glorify Christ, not to uh, live in self-gratification. And so he says, all these ones went through all these rituals. They went through all of these sacraments. They, they did all these religious activities. But then verse 5 says, But with many of them God was not well pleased. But with many of them God was not well pleased. They were not able to hear, Well done, my good and faithful servants. Rather, they had to hear, Depart from me, for I never knew you. What a tragedy. Notice what he says. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were not victorious. They were overthrown. Even though God promised and gave them delivery and brought them in uh, uh, and on their journey to the promised land, 
They didn't commit their lives to Christ. They didn't trust him. They weren't content uh, with what Christ had provided for them. They only wanted more, 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 and we'll see that tomorrow. And they were not content with Christ alone. They were not uh, reflecting his character and his attributes out of their lives. They just wanted him to make their lives better. And that's all they wanted him for. And what a sad reality. And it sounds much like what we're facing today. It's not um, new. And uh, I think there's a lot that probably we'll have to hear. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. I pray that not be the case with you today if you're listening to the sound of my voice and looking at these words before you because these are God's words. And we must be uh, sure that, as we'll see tomorrow, <laughs> that our lives look like Christ's life and not what we want. And so I pray you go forth mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I pray that you drink from the rock that is Christ and be encouraged.